Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Hudak and I'm here to share with you some really awesome things about the word diet. Ugh. It's a nasty four letter word <laughs> that we are hoping to get out of our vocabulary. One of those things I want to share with you First of all, is don't don't forget this this video and these series does not take the place of what your physician, what your own educator can do for you individually. This is a definitely very you know broad and it's not individualized, which I really hope that you get some individual help with. But um, I hope this brings some insight to you. So let's get started with the word diet. Yes. <laughs> I know at my age, um, I've been around a while, and I know that the word diet has been around for a long, long time. And to me, after being in this industry for over 15 years, uh, being a registered nurse, a certified diabetes educator, the word diet to me pretty much says die trying. Uh, <laughs> literally, people... <laughs> have died dieting, unfortunately, but it is miserable for people. I know when I have friends and we're going out to supper and they're like, oh, sorry, I'm on a diet. I can only have water. <laughs> no, don't say diet. Don't be on a diet. Uh, what I would love for it to be called, and it's not a very good, um, I guess, analogy for it, but it's MC. M-H-C-M, okay? <laughs> Make healthier choices, mostly. So that would be a better option than a diet. Uh, so I would love to know, and we have a little homework after this, but I would love to know what diet you've tried in the past. So because we're going to learn from this, this is the big key. What diets have you tried? Most of us have tried something. Yeah, we have. We have tried uh, something, whether it's just trying to go low fat, low calorie, low carb. Uh, some of us have tried some fad diets or extreme diets, maybe, you know, the Atkins diet, the grapefruit diet, the juice diet, the shake diet, the two shakes, and then a meal. Um, that was popular and still kind of is today. So um, the paleo diet, the Mediterranean diet, all of these different diets out there, some of them are more extreme than others. Some of these have great benefits. Uh, so I'm not going to pick on any of these diets, but some of these diets we can learn from. Okay, so diet's not just a horrible bad word all the time. Diet can mean two different things. You're on a diet or it's your nutrition. Okay, so let's get that straight. First of all, are you on a diet? No. <laughs> um, is your diet part of your nutrition? Yes. Okay, so let's get that straight there. So what, you know, many people go on a diet, there's that diet term, for certain reasons. Uh, most of the time they want to lose weight. They want to feel better. They heard about something that, you know, they thought would benefit them, so they're willing to try it, and they hear that it's going to give them quick results. So that's most of the time why someone will go on a diet is to get quick, quick results. Because we live in a world where we want instant gratification. Yes, always want, and we want things now. <laughs> we live in a society where, I mean, we can get anything from our fingertips. You know, we can get a book on here. We can Google. We can find things really, really quick. We can text someone and they respond right back. We want instant you know, gratification. So unfortunately, with nutrition, with our health, there is no instant gratification. So if you see a diet out there, this is, I'm going to just tell you right now, if you see a diet out there and people are losing weight over um, you know, a two-week period really, really fast and there's no long-term plan with that, I would highly suggest you just steer clear or figure it out or find out what the long-term plan of that diet is. Some diets we can really learn from, and actually most of these we can. So what I would love for you to do is kind of go back into your bank of what diets you've been on, and let's learn from them. So this is what I typically do with some of my, one of my, cli my clients, is I will say, okay, what have you done? How much weight did you lose? Um, what did you learn from that? Um, did you keep that weight off? And they always say, no, I gained it back plus some. <laughs> so unfortunately, that is the case for a lot of these is you'll lose weight, 
but then you do not keep it off. So my goal is to help you all keep your weight off for a long term of time. Uh, what we know through research and studies is the longer um, it takes you to get off the weight, the longer you will keep it off. So for me, and for you, I hope that you're not looking for instant gratification. I hope that you're looking for a lifestyle change, a long-term plan to um, let you live a long, healthy life uh, to the best of your ability. So some reasons why we fail at these diets. Okay, these are, these are keys. You go on a strict diet. Um, it's something you cannot stick with forever. And that's what something I want you to look at as well. Whatever you're doing, is it something you can stick with for the rest of your life. Okay? <laughs> Can you drink two shakes a day the rest of your life? Can you just eat meat the rest of your life? Can you buy this packet, put it in your drink for the rest of your life? If you can't, you need to stop and think of a different way. Or do what you're doing and learn from that and then start to wean yourself off of that into a healthier lifestyle that you can continue to keep that weight off. Okay. Reasons we fail. Um, our lifestyle doesn't change. So we do these instant gratification things, but we don't change anything else. We don't change our mind. We don't change our body. We don't change our thoughts. And we fall back and because we can't stick with it. Our habits, we are known to stick with habits. Habits, oh, they are tough. You know, just, uh, you know, habits of biting our fingernails, habits of dealing with emotional stressors. We grab for high fat foods or ice cream or whatever it might be. We deal with emotions certain ways. Uh, just a habit of driving by McDonald's every day on the way to work. So it's a habit that we tend to go back to because it's easy. It's easy to go back into a habit, but it's harder to make a change. So many times we're going to fall back into those habits um, unless we really do this for a long period of time. Past experiences, emotions, some of us are dealing with depression, anxiety, lots of different issues. You know, how, did, how were we when we were young children? What was food to us when we were a child? And what does it mean to us? So we might have to dig deep into that because that all affects what we're doing today with our nutrition and our health. Um, the activity, you know, many of us are sedentary or we're too active or we're not active enough or we don't even know where to start. So, you know, some of us are in chronic pain and can't. So that is um, a big predictor in your nutrition and staking with your diet. Also moderation. We don't know what moderation is, especially this day and age when we're put a plate of food at a restaurant and it's three times what we are really supposed to eat. In our brain, we think that's what we're supposed to eat. It was served to me three times what I was supposed to eat. So we have trouble even knowing what the word moderation is and what is that. Um, and willpower, I don't like that word. I really believe um, willpower, there's much more to willpower. We can talk about that on another subject, but it's really hard to stick with something if you don't have a desire or you don't have something emotionally attached to why you're doing this. So many of you people start with a diet, but they don't even have um, a reason or desire or end product that they're reaching for that they talk to, to it every day and the reason that they're doing this. So we need to have a desire and what we're wanting from this and emotional connection to that. We have a whole nother series on that that I can't wait to explain that to you soon. Okay, so um, what do we do? <laughs> and um, I'm going to give you some startling facts just real quick before I give you some homework and hopefully give you some things that you can leave with today, feel better about, and get the word diet out of your vocabulary. But some startling facts just real quick that um, a typical diet American diet exceeds the recommended intake. We, we know this, right? Um, and we also e exceed or actually decrease and eat less the amounts of the fruits, vegetables, whole grains, um, dairy, and oils that we need in a day. Most of us eat less than what we need. I actually took a poll and said, how many fruits and vegetables does everybody eat? And typically, some people were saying two a week. <laughs> Like, ah, just have three, you know, just seven a day of fruits and vegetables. So um, we are really low on what we need in our nutrition. 90% um, of us eat more than the recommended of sodium. That's a lot. Sodium can cause lots of problems. 40% of calories are consumed 
that are consumed are empty calories. So we're talking sugar, drinks, fruit juices, sodas, um, desserts, those things that really don't give us a lot of nutritional value or the high amounts of sugar and fat kind of outweigh the nutrition behind that. In 2030, half of all adults will be obese. This is why I'm doing what I am doing. <laughs> I cannot, I don't want to be alive and see that. We can make a difference and we can make a difference in our children's lives right now. So I want you to take a stand to make a difference in your life so you can pass down to your children and your grandchildren that this is not an option. This is not the way that Americans should live. We have to get back to what we know is best and get through and push through all these struggles that we have to get there. Also, overweight children have a 70% higher chance of becoming overweight as an adult. So we can make a change in ourselves. We can pass on these healthy lifestyle behaviors to our children, which will then lower that number. I will also have another series on this and how we can impact children. And I'm really excited about that coming up soon. I'm not sure what series it'll be, but it's coming soon. So um, let me finish off with a couple things. Many people don't even know how much to eat, what to eat. We have a whole other series on that too, but I want to give you an idea. Let me just give you something general. So I want you to take your weight. You don't have to comment your weight below, but I want you to take your weight and I want you to put a zero behind it, okay? So let's just say you're 165 pounds. You're going to put a zero behind it and that's going to be the amount of calories that you generally will need in a day to fuel your body. Now, this is completely a general idea. This is for semi-active people, this is not for sedentary people, and this is not for active adults or children. So we have more or less, and this is why this is very, this is not individual, but I wanted to give you an idea. So if you were to count calories, I'm not a big calorie counter, I think the thousands get kind of crazy, but if you just wanted to kind of know, I wanted to give you that little bit of information. All right, the last thing that I want to um, talk about is a little bit of homework. And also, kind of a plan that I absolutely love, and I've actually been working on this and doing this myself for about two years. Um, I recently lost a little bit about a weight. Um, I started a nutrition and educate, or, um, exercise program. Um, I started some, you know, some, some little energy supplements that are just all natural. And I really started to feel better. And I, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit stronger. But it took me about a year and um, before I could make that change. So you may not be ready to make that big change. Um, but I just started to do the, the Daniel plan. I have this uh, 40 days to a healthier life journal. I'm not telling you guys to have to go out and get this. You can actually go on the website and get some information. Um, I also have a, a devotional and it's a, it's a, a whole year devotional and you can read it something every day. And it really puts five principles in, in place. And you need all five of these to really make a healthier lifestyle. And that is to be focused, faith, food, friends, and fitness. So those five things, it incorporates all of that, you know, because we can't just go on a diet and just eat better. You have to change all these other things for that diet <laughs> to actually work and to learn from it and to keep it long-term. So the first thing I want you to do is, if you didn't see the series one, I want you to go back and look at series one on this page. Um, it was... I think it was forwarded. I had put it on my personal page, but it's in this page in the feed. Uh, but I want you to go back and, and watch that if you can. But then I want you to do some homework for that. And that was, where are you with your fitness? Where are you with your nutrition? Um, are you writing things down? Do you know what you're putting in your body? What, you, what can you do for exercise? Um, how are your relationships with your wife, your spouse, your um, your children, your family. What are those relationships like? Are you struggling? Are you happy in life? Um, just kind of all a gamut. Where are you right now? Um, we're going to talk about where you want to be later, or you can start to do that. But the homework for today, that was last week's homework. The homework for today is to take diet out of your vocabulary. 
That's the first thing. I want you to, when you go to your restaurant or when you're at a friend's house, you don't say that I'm on a diet. No, you're not. <laughs> you're making healthier choices mostly. That's what you're doing. Most of the day, you're making healthier choices and you're making actions towards a healthier life. Um, second thing I want you to work on is focus on eating regularly. Many of us, we think if we don't eat as often, then we don't have to worry about anything or we're gonna decrease our calories. But what you're doing is you're putting your body in starvation mode. So, and that's a whole nother segment as well. We do not want to, to put our body in starvation mode. That means even when you're not hungry, you need to eat because some of us don't feel hunger. Um, but also this is goes into play with how much you're eating as well. So if you have a really good, decent breakfast, which we'll talk about calories and carbs and fat and all that later, but if you have a decent breakfast, you still might need to have a nice healthy snack around two to three hours later to get you through and to keep your blood sugar stable. Um, a nice, decent lunch, you might need a snack in between lunch and supper, and then supper, a decent supper, and then you may need a snack before bed. Yes, that is eating six times a day, possibly. Now, don't quote me on that. Everybody's individual, but I want you to think about getting something in your belly about every two to three hours, if you need to. Um, if you have a really good high fiber, nutritious vegetables, high, good fat, um, good lean protein, and you're not hungry two hours later, you might not need a snack um, if you know you're going to be eating a little bit earlier within four to hours. Do not go four to five hours without eating. Please, 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 please. Now, we are sleeping and we don't eat and that is normal. Okay, that's the next thing. Do not skip a meal, ever. <laughs> please don't skip meals. That is one of the worst things you can do for your body. Screws up your metabolism, um, makes you gain weight, and it does not give your body the nutrition that it needs. So that's, that's another thing. The last thing I want you to think about is let's change our thoughts on food. Food is for nutrition. It is used to fuel our body, our cells, our fat cells, our muscle cells to survive, to live, so we can live a happy life. <laughs> there is no bad food. Okay, when you look at a food, if, even if you're looking at a donut, this is not bad. It's not bad. It's not the best choice. No, you can choose this or you cannot choose it, but it does not mean that you can't have it. And even as a diabetic, pre-diabetic, you can have that donut. But is that the best choice? No, probably an egg sandwich would be a better choice <laughs> or, you know, even a bowl of oatmeal and a, a couple slices of turkey, whatever it might be, that's going to be a better option than the donut. Now, I'm not saying you can't have that. You can choose this donut, but you will pay the consequences, which is long-term. If you choose the donut over the healthy food, you will then have more difficulty and problems and, and more trouble losing weight and more trouble managing your blood sugars and health other, other issues. So don't ever sell yourself you can't have anything. You can have anything you want. You can choose anything you want. This is your life, right? If you choose that choice, you have consequences and you know benefits or gains or not benefits from that. So I hope that you all learned a little bit today. I would love for you to comment below right after this what diets you have tried and what you've learned from those diets. Um, and if you are ready to make the commitment to keep diet out of your system <laughs> and your mouth, uh, then I would love for you to comment below if you're ready to take that out of your system, out of your out of your life and to move forward towards a healthier journey for yourself. All right. Thank you guys. I look forward to um, hopping in on Wednesdays as well as the next series is next Friday around lunchtime. Thank you.